Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the University Online Portal. So today I am here to have a uh, have discussion on the real time PCR, which comes under the course title Genetic Engineering under the program code PGBCS 118N. So before I start, we have a brief discussion on real time PCR, which is also known as uh, a quantitative molecular tool. Quantitative molecular tool uh, reflects the capability of the real time PCR to quantify and measure DNA. Uh, in a very precise manner, making it an indispensable tool in the scientific and other research application. Hence, it also gives result in the form of quantitative measurement, that is, and also in the form of accurate measurement, dynamic monitoring, real-time monitoring, applications in the research, clinical and diagnostic applications, as well as data analysis. So, introduction to real-time PCR. We will cover five steps. Overview in which we will cover the difference between the real and the end time PCR, also general protocol for real time PCR, real time detection, data analysis and the interpretation. In overview, we will cover, we know that in the real time PCR and the conventional PCR there is a basic difference between the endpoints. We will come to know the uh, product at the end of the cycle in the conventional PCR, whereas in the real time PCR the progression amplified products get detected with the progression of each cycle. Hence, it is, uh, hence it, it is, it, it, it will lead to the real time detection and where the precise copy number of the template can be obtained, whereas in conventional PCR it is an, uh, we will not be able to calculate the precise copy number of the template. Real time PCR abbreviated as the uh, RT-PCR, so it is a common tool for detecting and quantifying expression, it is the advancement of the standard PCR technique, again it has changed the way of measuring gene expression. Uh, because it combines amplification and detection into a single step, so it is a uh, com uh, combined and versatile technique. Also, the data is collected during the entire process, which means during the whole cycle, data data gets collected irrespective of uh, end result. Also, the data collection starts as soon as the target amplification is first detected, means as soon as the fluorescence get detected, the target amplification will be determined. So, uh, the difference between the real time PCR as well as end time PCR, also known as conventional and the traditional PCR. In the normal PCR, it allows analysis of short sequence of DNA by amplifying the selected uh, segment of the DNA. In real time PCR, we will able to detect quantification and do analysis of nucleic acid for various purposes. In case of PCR, as the name suggests, it is a qualitative technique, means it will determine the presence or absence of the gene. In case of real-time PCR, it is a quantitative technique, which means we can quantify, we can measure the amplified product. Moreover, the product is detected by the agarose gel electrophoresis, means after the amplification is done, the product has to run on the gel to get it uh, visualized. In the real-time PCR, the product can be detected in each amplification cycle, it means at every cycle we will come to know the result. The data is collected at the end of the reaction, as I already mentioned. The data is collected during the exponential phase, means the growth phase of the reaction, the data gets accumulated. Also, in case of uh, PCR, it has a very poor resolution as compared to the real-time PCR. We will use ethidium bromide dye to stain the product, to stain the DNA amplicons on the gel. To get it visualized, we have to use ethidium bromide dye. In case of real-time PCR, we will be using fluorescent dyes to detect the product, such as Tamra as well as uh, cyber green and fluorescent dyes. Moreover, in case of PCR, more time consuming means we have to uh, perform the PCR reaction as well as we have to run the products on the gel. So, it is more time consuming as compared to the real time PCR where the detection and the amplification goes simultaneously and uh, it will lead to less consumption of time. In uh, PCR, uh, we will use DNA as a template. If we want to uh, amplify the wanted gene, then we have to use a DNA as a template. In case of RT PCR, we have to use RNA as a template. In case of uh, PCR, it is we can detect the presence or absence of the certain genomic fragments, while in case of real time PCR, we have to quantify certain fragment, we have to measure whether the gene expression is high or lower in case of any target gene. Principle of real time PCR. It is used to monitor the progress of PCR reaction in a real time, means it, uh, real time monitoring of the uh, reaction is being done in the real time PCR. In the real time PCR and in qualitative PC, uh, quantitative PCR, the basic principle would be same, that is the amplification is already carried out in both the PCR. In polymerase chain reaction, we will follow the denaturation steps, annealing steps as well as elongation steps. So, 
elongation steps. So it is based on the detection of the fluorescence molecules produced by the reporter molecule, that is FAM molecule, which goes on increasing as the reaction progresses. Means that discrimination between the real time PCR as well as the normal PCR relies on the fact that uh, relies on the fact of the uh, detection process. Here the detection would be done by the real time detection system. Uh, and based on the fluorescence dyes, which is directly proportional to the amount of the amplified product. While in case of the uh, uh, normal PCR, it is based on the PCR products that has to be run on the gel at the end of the cycle. So the direction will be visualized on the ethidium bromide dye, which, which will uh, stain the intercalates the, between the DNA and give the results. So how does the real time PCR works? Real time PCR works on the, it is divided into the two phases, basically into the exponential phase and into the non-exponential exponential phases. So the CT value, that is the critical critical threshold cycle, it comes under the exponential phase, where the growth and the fluorescence signal or the amplified product has increased. In the plateau phase, there is no growth, means one or more of the components in the master mix becomes limiting and the reaction slows down. So, there, is, so there, there will be compromisation in the uh, PCR product uh, formation. Also, the amount of PCR product approximately doubles in each cycle, means after each cycle, that is 21, 20 to 21, the amount of the PCR products get doubled. Also, the fluorescence uh, from the amplification reaction is pr proportional to the amplified product. It means as soon as it goes on the exponential phase, the amount of the amplification, it will directly proportional to the amplified product means the intensity of the signal if it goes exponentially then the product will also get amplified exponentially. So the general uh, protocol for the real time PCR which we will do in the uh, normal laboratory conditions first we need to isolate the RNA we have to check the integrity its quality quantity and we have to characterize it again since it is uh, unstable so we have to make cDNA from it uh, cDNA is uh, relatively stable than uh, RNA. Uh, CDN is made from RNA through uh, RT-PCR, again uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme and again a real time data acquisition will take place and uh, suppose from the cells RNA is isolated, CDN is made, real time will be performed from the cyber green and the Tacman probe blaze fluorescent dyes leading to the CT determination, further it goes for data analysis. So how does the detection chemistry works? So, in all, in the normal PCR, the parent DNA means the wanted gene as a template, the primer, the DNTPs as a substrate as well as polymerase. These all the four components are common. Detector, here detector is extra added uh, in the real time PCR. Detector is, means the fluorescent dyes like uh, cyborgene or the uh, FAM dye we use, uh, or the Tacman probe we used here uh, as a detector. So, in the sample, it uh, it emits certain wavelength of light and it uh, it absorbs certain wavelength of light or it emits certain wavelength of light to get it detected by the real time machine so some basic properties of the cyber green dye and the tacman probe in the uh, cyber green dye it is basically dye that bounds to the minor group of the dna as compared to the major group of dna minor group is that where the backbones of the dna are uh, close together uh, in contrast to the major group where the DNA backbones are far apart. So, uh, uh, in the case of cyborgene, whenever it sees the double stranded DNA, it just binds unspecifically to the double stranded DNA and it gets eliminated and gets uh, and provides fluorescent signal. So, uh, providing uh, when it binds to double stranded DNA, it gives fluorescent signal, means the more the number of, uh, more the quantity of the amplified product, more would be the fluorescence intensity. So this is the basic representation of the cyber green one fluorescence dye. As I mentioned, uh, Tacman probe, uh, cyber green is uh, uh, lacks specificity. Tacman probe is highly specific in the detection system, in the real time detection system. Because we designed probe and probe which uh, we designed from the target sequence, a specific target sequence. So probe has two parts, chlorophore and the quencher. Fluorophyll gives flu, uh, fluorescent in intensity and quenches the fluorophore, that is fluorescent signal. So, uh, under the normal condition, fluorescence and quencher are in close proximity, so it will not give fluorescence. So, what are the steps that are involved in the real-time PCR? 
the whole procedure is divided into two parts uh, amplification and detection as uh, we mentioned earlier that denaturation annealing and extension comes under the amplification and amplification and detection processes goes simultaneously so in denaturation which occurs at 90 to 95 degrees centigrade where both the strands get separated and annealing where primer gets bind extension where dna synthesis occurs at 72 degrees celsius so since the amplicons are very small in case of uh, real time pcr so annealing and the extension steps both are combined uh, so it will become a two step process and uh, as well as uh, during the amplification itself the detection is observed as you can see here after the denaturation polymerization takes place and as soon as the double stranded dna get uh, elongated get synthesized uh, cybergin comes and binds irrespective of the specific location in case of tacman probe it binds with the, uh, as the elongation process it gives fluorescence at strand displacement uh, will take place and uh, quencher releases the fluorescence uh, leading to the uh, increase in the fluorescence signal intensity Generally, there are different types of markers used in the real-time PCR. We always, but in widely used are Tacman probe and the Cyber Green dyes. We widely use as a primer. Overview of the detection chemistry using the Cyber Green based method. As we have discussed earlier, also that it binds to the minor group of the DNA, basically double stranded DNA. Non-specifically, it binds. It absorbs at 497 nm and emits at 520 nm to get the, to give the signal. Cyber green is preferred over ethidium bromide as it has a higher intensity. Also, it lacks a, a specificity when we compared it with the Tacman probe, which is more specific. Again, it is more preferred uh, over the Tacman probe because it can provide information about each cycle of the amplification as well as the melting temperature simultaneously. So here you can see in the denaturation, since uh, so both the strands are separated, so fluorescent material will not intercalate during the primal annealing one molecules get intercalate as soon as the extension will occur more number of cyber green molecule that is fluorescent molecule intercalates between the double stranded dna and gives uh, the signal fluorescent signal which is directly proportional to the number of amplified product so what are the characteristic of tacman probe tacman probe is a hydrolysis probe which bears a reporter fam dye at the 5 prime end and quencher at the 3 prime end. So, during the normal condition that is the denaturation step, fluorescence material are in close proximity with the quencher. So, it remained coiled itself, inhibiting the fluorescent uh, molecule to get uh, to give the signal as, a quen as quencher quenches the fluorescence material. Since in the primer annealing and the probe hybridation process, Polymerase start synthesizing new strand in the uh, a new strand, and hence the degradation of the probe uh, occurs, which releases the fluorescent molecule from the reporter molecule, and hence uh, as uh, DNA poly in the elongation step, as more number of fluorescent molecules get uh, increased, the more number of uh, uh, the, the quantity of amplified product gets increased. As as this procedure continues in each cycle, the number of signal the number of signal molecule increases causing the increase in the fluorescent which is positively related to the amplified amplification of the target which we will see in this reaction. Also as the tag polymerase start to synthesize new strand in the extension state is it gets degraded the probe gets degraded by the 5 prime end of the nucleus activity this is the tag polymerase and when it elongates it synthesizes new strand the uh, nucleus activity of the polymerase degrades the tacman probe which separates the fluorescence from the quencher what are the advantages of the tacman probe as compared to the cyber green suppose we have to uh, find we have to find a gene we have to find one gene two gene three gene in a single reaction then multiplexing would be done and we will design the probe we will design the probe uh, with different dyes. So, we can detect n number of genes from in a single reaction. It is highly specific means, suppose uh, if you design the probe from a specific target sequence, so it will bind specifically to the complementary strand, so it is highly specific. Moreover, there are certain disadvantages of the Tacman probe that is, it is very hard to sequence due to hydrolysis. Due to hydrolysis, it is very hard to sequence. Also, it is more expensive. Uh, it, it also gives false positive, it is not 100% accurate. So, this is the graph uh, which shows the CT values, which shows the amplification product. 
data analysis is done in the form of this graph this is the baseline here you can see linear uh, ground phase means here the amplification has occurred but the fluorescent signal is not detected once the graph line uplift from the uh, baseline it gives ct values here it gives ct values so the ct cycle would be uh, would become uh, come under 16 to ct value would come under 16 to 18 cycle early exponential phase in early exponential phase means the fluorescent signal uh, molecules increased amplification occurs so it goes into the log linear phase as we come near to the end the pcr product the pcr components and the master mix becomes limiting hence it affects the normal real time pcr so here we can see the plateau phase means the reaction is not supported by certain components and during 28 to 40 cycle it generally occurs so what is critical threshold critical threshold uh, is also known as cq value ct value means the cycle at which the detectable signal is achieved which comes under the exponential phase so PCR cycle at which the detector is able to detect the fluorescent pattern and the graph line uplift from the baseline. Here you can see the graph line uplifts from the baseline. So here you come to know the CT value. Also the CT value is inversely proportional to the amount of template DNA means if the template molecule is large the CT value will come more earlier and if the CT value if the template is very small then the CT value will come late. So if you want a wanted gene. Uh, which is highly expressed, then the CT value has to come earlier. So in summary, the data from the real-time PCR are called critical threshold uh, cycle values. CT is the cycle number at which detectable signal is achieved. Detectable signal is achieved. Lower the CT, the large amount of template in the sample. Higher the CT, less amount of template in the sample. So, what are the types of real-time quantification methods? So there are two types. One is absolute quantification. Second one is relative quantification. Relative quantification is most widely used. It is done using the delta-delta CT method, also known as LEVAC method. It tells about the fold chain. Means the fold chain difference between the two uh, samples. In absolute quantification, it tells about how many copy number. So, uh, in relative quantification, we will be following uh, in absolute quantification the PCR signal relates to the standard curve in relative quantification we will quantify we will compare the two uh, uh, two gene expression values uh, one that is with untreated second one is uh, with the treated one so we will compare the treated with the untreated one or with any other uh, treatment group concept of reference genes and the normalization Suppose sample A has a cycle value of 19 and sample B has a cycle uh, CT value of 22. So, but naturally the gene X expression would be higher in case of sample A. So, uh, but what if, if the sample A has already has higher amount of cDNA. So, it will generally give the uh, higher gene expression. So, there comes the concept of uh, normalization and the reference gene. So, concept of normalization by house sweeping genes or constitutive expressive genes is done with the help of actin and GAPDH, uh, tubulin, ribosomal genes which are also known as endogenous genes means the expression is same is expressed constitutively across all the tissues. We need to do this normalization because we have to correct the sample to sample variation because sample varies during the collection process in the, uh, with regard to cell, with regard to mass, with regard to sample treatment, with regard to experimental condition. So it is very important to normalize these gene expression analysis with the housekeeping genes. So, um, the LIVAC method calculation, here we will discuss, that uh, method is de based on the target and reference gene amplification with almost 100% efficiency. Also, uh, 2 minus delta delta CT gives the full change in the gene expression as compared uh, with the comparison between the two conditions. So, the final result of this method is presented as the full change of the target gene expression in the target sample with respect to the reference sample and normalized to the reference genes that is control genes. 
so suppose we have to calculate the delta delta ct then first we have to understand what is delta ct delta ct is basically the difference between the target gene and the reference gene target gene means the gene of interest reference genes means endogenous gene or you may call it a control gene then after calculating delta ct we have to calculate delta delta ct delta delta ct would be the delta ct of the target sample means the treated sample which we have to analyze minus that uh, delta ct of the control sample means the untreated sample so both these differences are very important in understanding the fold change difference there are some implications of real time pcr in the gene expression analysis quantification dna rna quantification in some disease diagnosis that is viral quantification and pathogen detection transgenic testing to identify the gene copy number in the plant and animal breeding so here is the general graphical picture which comes when we will follow the real time pcr these are the fluorescence generated from the rocks tamra and fam dyes these are the uh, sigmoid type uh, curves which is detected in a bioread or some other systems so in conclusion real time uh, uh, helps to decide which reaction have worked well and which reaction have failed the efficiency of the reaction can be precisely calculated there is no need to run the pcr product on the gel and also it performs the qualitative quantitative analysis of the gene expression as i already mentioned it uh, uh, it gives the accurate measurement it is more faster on the uh, and more rapid than normal pcr it is less complex at the quantification of the sample mm -hmm.